What's up everyone, this is Josh, and today we're gonna to be talking about finding your voice, your writer's voice. So what is your voice? What is your writer's voice? I like to think of it this way. Your voice is uh, an extension of your personality to a degree. So it's similar to the clothing that we wear, right? It's, it's one way to communicate who we are. Are you funny? Are you smart? Are you quirky? A little bit weird, a little bit fun? Are you adventurous? Your writing should portray who you are. So here's a couple of examples real quick. So I'm gonna read off a bit here from a very famous author and I'd like to see if you can tell who it is just by their voice. That was one of the few things that he really knew. He knew about that, about motorcycles. That was earliest. About motor cars, about duck shooting, about fishing, trout, salmon, and big sea. About sex and books, many books, too many books about all court games, about dogs, not much about horses, about hanging on to his money, about most of the other things his world dealt in, and about his wife not leaving him. His wife had been a great beauty, and she was still a great beauty in Africa, but she was not a great enough beauty anymore at home to be able to leave him and better herself, and she knew it, and he knew it. Did you guess it? That was an excerpt from The Short Happy Life of Francis Macomber. Macomber. It was written by Hemingway. And one of the biggest giveaways to this being his writing is uh, one of the things that he does a lot, and that's use the word and over and over and over and over again. A lot. Here's another one. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a good wife. Who is that? Jane Austen, of course, right? You got it? Did you get it? We can tell this is Jane Austen because it's it's witty. It's um, actually a lot more brief than some of the things that she likes to write, but it's but she kind of I, I guess talks in the way that you know, people talked back then, which apparently was in long, flowing, eloquent sentences. So that's a couple quick examples of uh, a couple different writers' voices. But I feel like I should really make this point because it's a big one. And that is that your voice is much more than just an extension of who you are, really. It is you, your character, your personality, all of your little quirks and nonces, everything that you are encapsulated in your words. So when you read a piece from somebody's work, you read it and you say, that could not have possibly been written by anyone other than this person. That's what we're going for here. That voice that's so distinct, so unique, that no one can copy it. Or they can copy it, but, it, you know, it's plagiarism or whatever. So the science of writing is knowing how to put together a good story, knowing the bits and pieces, the parts that put together and create this masterpiece. The art, the craft of writing, is how you put those pieces together. All right. On to finding your voice. Here's how it's done. First, describe yourself in three words. Are you fun, adventurous, odd? If I was describing myself, I would say, yeah, I'm a little bit weird. Um, I like to think I'm fun, and I like to think I'm creative. So those are the words that I'd write down. Next, if you were a food, what food would you be? Would you be pizza, and why? Would you be eggnog and why would you be sex on a beach and why next you are what you eat right if i eat a ton of fatty things i will become a fatty thing we've done it before and i'll probably do it again so what do you eat what do you consume what videos do you watch what movies do you watch what uh youtube videos do you binge on what do you read if you read a ton of hemingway it's going to show up in your writing right? You're going to be a lot more straightforward to the point, concise, manly. If you read a lot of Jane Austen, on the other hand, you're going to be a lot more flowery, a lot more descriptive, eloquent, witty. Next, I want you to imagine your target audience, your target reader, who you want to appeal to. And I'll give you a hint here, and this is, this is a big one you will be inevitably appealing to people like you. 
people who can relate with you because uh, you're not an actor you're not an actress you're a writer right we don't pander to other audiences we don't um, try to sound like other people to attract a larger audience anything along those lines because we're writers. It's not what we do. Not that actors and actresses do that necessarily. I don't know much about the business. I'm just saying that what we have to do is be who we are. So come up with those three books that you're currently reading or your three of your favorite books, right? Ask yourself, who do I love reading? Which authors are your favorite authors? Write those guys down and write why. What about their voice attracts you to them? Uh, what about their voice is unique and something that you can see in yourself? Another great thing to do is ask your friends, ask your family, what makes my voice unique, right? What about my personality is uh, different than other people, um, uniquely different? Like, what do I have, what do I possess within me that's 100% different from anyone and everyone you've ever met, right? It's a tough question, but you'd be surprised what they'll come up with. Finally, audit yourself. So go to your journal, go to your past uh, blog articles, your whatever you've written recently, and go through it. Jot down notes of what those words are communicating to people. Right, so if you go through your writing and you say, "Wow, this is really neat," because it, it's it's fun, it's really lighthearted, it's um, it's it's kind of funny, it's a little bit quirky, whatever. Great. Oh, and one more before I forget. This is extremely important. Your emotions. One thing that's really going to bleed into your words is what you're feeling. Don't be afraid to share your emotions. If you're if you're sad sometimes, if you're depressed sometimes, are you are you happy all the time? It's great if you are. Let that let that shine through in your writing. Are you high strung? Nothing wrong with being high strung, right? You're, you get a ton done. You're like a, a little social butterfly. Not necessarily social butterfly. You're a butterfly just flitting all over the place. And it's great. It's great to be that way. I'm not really that way. But sometimes I would like to be. Are you, are you highly driven? Are you disciplined? Do you have a lot of self-control? It's another thing I would love to have more of. If that's you, let that show up in your writing, in your order, in your organization. So that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. hope it helped you out a little bit. If it did, please like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, I'll probably see you next week, maybe even a little bit earlier. And um, yeah.